It's kind of wild to think that the very first thing I saw Paul Giamatti in, this critically acclaimed actor who can do almost everything, was Big Fat Liar. Welcome back to Christmas in the Middle, everybody. Today our movie in the middle is The Holdovers. <laughs> The Holdovers. The Holdovers is a heartwarming Christmas drama following Paul Hunnam, a stern and traditional prep school teacher, his troublesome student, and the school's grieving head cook as they stay at the school over the holiday break. It stars Paul Giamatti, Dominic Sessa, and Devine Joy Randolph. It is Christmas time again. I feel like we were just here. Every year just goes faster and faster, and I'm having an existential crisis about it. Please help. But I will say that this movie did help a little bit because it slows life down just a little bit. I did not know what to expect from this movie at all because I hadn't seen the trailer. I had only seen a poster about it. I had no idea what was going to be in this movie and I was very glad for it. Starting off with the highs, firstly, I loved the aesthetic and visual choices for this movie. It is a complete recreation of 70s filmmaking, right down to the vintage production company logos, plain credits, plain opening text. It's made to look as if it was shot on film, it has that 4x3 pillar boxing aspect ratio, and it even employs the long telephoto zoom outs that the 70s was notorious for having. I think it was a great choice to have it set in the 70s because it, it helps kind of slow things down a little bit, especially considering the story is a little bit slower, a little bit quieter, and I think we kind of need that right now. But of course, the majority of the highs and the really strong points of this movie are going to come from the characters and the story because it is heavily, pretty much all, a, a character study drama. Paul Giamatti, this might be one of his best, if not his best role, at least that I've seen. I love him in so many things that I've seen him in. Everything that he's in, he just gives us all to. He is really, really great at playing both people who are just the worst and also people who are the most heartwarming. And so this was probably his best role because he's able to combine those. One minute you love him for who he is and sticking to his principles and you really like how he talks and, and, and converses with people. And then the next minute he's like this stereotypical boomer professor that you absolutely hate. I mean, it, it, it gave me like flashbacks to school and the stresses of school and exams and detentions. It's interesting seeing both sides of it, especially at the age I'm at now, because the student side of me is like, God, I, I hate this guy. He, he He's so stern and so strict and really unfair sometimes. But then the adult side of me is also kind of like, these kids kind of suck. <laughs> so I kind of feel bad for him. But of course, that side of him, that, that main personality he shows off isn't everything to him. Obviously, he has more depth. Obviously, he has more that we don't see. He has a past that he's not proud of and things that he's done. And it's very cool to see that throughout the movie and through the, the bonding with this other student that he has over the course of the plot. Because it is funny to see the other side of teachers. You know, again, being only graduated like a couple years ago, well, maybe more than a couple at this point. But as a student, as you get older, you come to realize teachers weren't always just teachers. You know, obviously, they are people too. And they have fears and, and hobbies and passions and struggles. And, and it's kind of interesting to see what are they like outside of the classroom, especially for a student like the, the student in this movie. It's probably really cool to see this other side of him because they, they do have entire lives. Like, like, do they let loose? Do they really suck as a person in every aspect of their lives? Are they just sad? And I think a lot of that is applicable for this character of Paul Hunnam. But one thing I really did respect about the movie is that they never just completely change or abandon his character once we find out more about him. Obviously, we see more depth and, and more details about him, but they also don't, like, completely change him by the end. He sticks to who he is, and he's still that same person. We just kind of get to see behind the curtain a little bit. And of course, it's not just him. It's these other two characters as well. The, the student that he's with, who's kind of a, a troublesome student. But again, I like that they bring things out of each other. So as much as we're getting about Paul Giamatti's character, we're also getting a lot about Dominic Sessa's character. And I think this is just as important because, of course, we want to see that the really strict teacher has a fun side to him. But it is very, very important to see that students... While they can seem troublesome, they're going through a lot, especially because they're still kids. We forget that students, even in high school, are kids, and they are developing, and they are just going through life for the first time. They don't know shit, even if they think that they do, and they are struggling with so much, and then so much is put on them in addition in school. And I won't get into that rant right now, but I, I, I think that it's just, it's too much. 
and we forget how much they're actually already going through. So it was very, very good to see that and to see a teacher realize this and care about this in a movie. Like, I just, obviously, it's not the very first time at all. It was still cool to see it in this movie. I think it, they did a really, really great job with it. And also with Dominic Sessa's character growing empathy for the teacher as well and seeing him as a person and seeing him with respect, not just as somebody that he's meant to not stand. And of course, Devine Joy Randolph in this movie is just so good. I've only ever seen her in, in Only Murders in the Building. And there she plays, you know, she's she's serious. You can take her seriously, but it's more of, it's a comedy, you know? Um, so she's a lot funnier in that one. And she just plays more of a lighthearted cop. In this one, of course, it's a very serious movie. And especially with her character, she's dealing with a lot because she just lost her son in the Vietnam War. And I think that the, the the scenes with her were so good. Um, I honestly wanted more, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. But I, I loved her in this movie because she's sort of the go-between between, between Paul Giamatti and Dominic Sessa's characters, um, kind of as the uh, look. You both have problems. You both hate each other for this or that reason. I'm dealing with a lot here too. It's not worth it. And uh, she was she was really really great. She was kind of the glue that held them together. But the other thing that I have to praise this movie for is the screenplay. It is so hard to write a movie well period but it is so hard to write a slice of life movie that has the structure of a general movie and has themes and characters that come full circle by the end and yet feels realistic and natural because life is not perfect it's not set up structurally perfect in any way and so that's why it's so amazing when these stories happen that do really take place in life you know based off true stories but they they are they just come full circle and they have these things that you can get out of them and that being said i think that this movie is the one that really drove into my brain that slice of life movies have the luxury of not needing every detail and every subplot to come back around or or mean something at the end or come full circle so long as it's pushing and and addressing affecting the main plot, the main relationships of the movie. So here, there's a couple scenes that come up where characters are introduced, or, you know, just some subplot starts to come up, and it never really comes back. And and my, you know, old self a while ago would have been like, man, I hated this, nothing came back around, what was it even for? But again, it's a very simple thing that I probably should have been able to understand a while ago, but slice of life movies have never been super my thing. I like them, but they always bother me because of this. But it, I think it really just made it click for me that you can have all of these scenes, but the point isn't for that person or or this thing to be super important. It's just to add to this relationship that is the core of the movie. And I will say in this one, as it pushes into the second half, there's a lot of things that come up in rapid succession that sort of feel like they, they're sort of just throwing all of these little things in there, especially things that are like, I don't know, taboo topics or things that are like big struggles. And it feels like they're trying to throw in a lot of things that just feel to make it like inclusive, you know? But I don't think that that's the case because I think we forget that so many people don't just deal with one struggle or one problem in their life. I think, I think we forget just how much a person's life can contain from people to thoughts to hobbies to fears to, to struggles i mean just just people we how many people do we know in in our lives so i think they did a really really good job of kind of making this balance where it wasn't just giving us surface level characters but also not giving us an onslaught of details that just make it like they're just forcing them into the movie they kind of give us first impressions of these characters and then slowly gradually blow the doors open to see their lives are, are a mess, and they have a lot of stuff going on, but I think it is realistic. I don't think it's necessarily forced. My only middle is, with all that being said, there is one thing that I felt was, was kind of weird with the kids at the beginning, because there's multiple kids that have to stay over, over the holiday until it becomes only this, this one kid that is through the rest of the movie. For me, again, I, I, I think it's just they were there to serve, like, seeing how both Paul Giamatti and Dominic Sess's characters or at the beginning, where there's a lot of people around, and then leaving it even more awkward and quieter when the other kids leave. But I did feel it was kind of weird that they, they like started to flesh out these kids a little bit more, and then we never got to see them again, or they never really came back around. So, you know, I was like, I, I get it. It's not that big of a deal, um, because again, it was more so just like fleshing out the main two, 
at the beginning, but it was weird because they, we did get little details here and there, and then just never really saw them again. And I would have liked to have I don't know, one or two more little things with them. If I had to have a low, I feel that especially in the second half, it really focuses only on the main two, teacher and student, and Mary, the the, the the head cook, she's left out of the story a little bit more, and I thought it was going to be about the three of them a little bit more. Obviously, it's more so like these two, and then she's there for a lot of it, but not all of it. But I think for the fact that she is also dealing with a lot, I would have liked one or two more scenes with her in the second half, just with her perspectives on things and, and Paul Giamatti talking to her about certain things. I don't know, I guess, maybe how much more they could have done, but I felt like they just kind of like, she, she was kicked out of the story a little bit later on, I would have just liked one or two more scenes with her because she was really, really great. And I, I really liked her story and the perspectives that uh, came up with what she was talking about. So overall, The Holdovers was a breath of fresh air. It is one that I, I, nobody's going to go to see it because it looks really small and indie and quiet. And it is. But that's what we need right now. As much as I talk about Marvel's doing fine, don't worry about Marvel and all that stuff. Obviously, I want original stories as well, and this is just, it's so refreshing to have this stuff because it, it takes you into a very small part of somebody's life in a movie that you would have never seen before. It doesn't feel generic or mainstream. It feels like this one little section that you're going into, and especially for Christmas, it's very heartwarming. Obviously, it's it's got emotional moments and, and struggles, and it's a little bit awkward here and there, but... It's got a lot of funny moments as well. It's, it's, it is very funny um, for a lot of it. Little awkward secondhand humor things. And it was just, uh, you know, perfect for coming up into, into the Christmas season. I mean, this, this movie is for anybody who loves that Poet Society or, or Green Book, or even if you hated Green Book and want that but different and better. The relationships here are, are incredible. I loved this movie. It, it felt like I was in it for about 17 years, but it was, I, I loved every minute of it. I'm going to give The Holdovers a four out of four, making it my next top shelf movie. Well, guys, let me know what you thought of The Holdovers and let me know what your Christmas plans are. What are you going to be doing? I'm really excited for some of the movies that are coming out this, this month. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and movies right in the middle. I'll see you guys later.